Alright all, how are things and welcome back to Blair White's blog and we're back in front of the camera, no vlogging today just another preview video of fantastic weekend ahead of us especially the Saturday cards over in England the Betfair Chase at Haydock, the Ascot Chase and Ascot Hurdle uh, just to name a few, I'm going to run through the big races I think two the two races, the of what was formerly known as the Ascot Chase and Ascot Hurdle. It's now, I think, the Christie 1965 Chase and the Coral Hurdle. And at uh, Haydock, the Betfair Chase and the Betfair Exchange Stairs Handicap Hurdle. So I'm going to run through those four races in this video and just give you my kind of selections. Trying to keep it, as always, a little bit outside the box. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the last video. If you haven't gone and seen it, please do go. I'll probably leave a link to it down below, or it'll probably just be in the suggested anyway about my Cheltenham vlog. It seems to have gone down well, so I'm glad you guys like that. There will be more of that coming around Christmas time with Leopard's Den and stuff like that. But anyway, moving into it, that's why you're here. You're here to hear the preview, and we'll start off with the big one, the Betfair Chase. Only five runners in the end, over three mile one, which is... Not to be unexpected, to be fair, considering how good the ground is still. And I think this could still end up being only four runners. Because they're him and haw now about Bristol de May on the ground. They said earlier this week, you know, you know, good ground won't be bad for this horse. And now they're going around saying, well, it might be too good. So, you never really know. It obviously seems to be between the two. Might bite a native river. Might bite his evens. Not really sure why he's evens. I can see why perhaps you might want you might see the pull um on Native River because it's just it's a flatter track. There isn't that hill to climb and, and might bite away from Cheltenham does seem to be better than he is at Cheltenham, but I'm not quite sure why he's evens and Native River's five to two. Considering this race is still over three mile one, like it's not it's not like Kempton, like if we were at Kempton for the King George and these were these prices, you'd probably say fair enough. But I don't know, like my by all of them are coming back, you know, all five runners are coming back after a bit off, some longer than others. Uh, but I don't think this race is just as kind of a two horse race as it seems. It might end up being so. And uh, as always with my tips, you know, they could be completely wrong. But I would be giving a chance on Tisselcrack at the prices. I think he's nine to one. Now, you know, it's just it's just in comparison. Like Might Bite's evens. Like I'm I'm not gonna back Might Bite at Evens, uh, considering it is three mile one native river five to two. If you want to go for the two one of those two, I would go for Native River. But I think Tisselcrack at nine to one is a good price. I think people seem to forget how good everyone thought he would be i know there's there's concerns he's off for almost a year his jump uh, his jumping is usually quite good if anything just a bit too bold and um, more so the issue with thistle crack is going to be the um w the ability to see out the race and perhaps kind of stay on as good as the others but i'd like to hope usually he doesn't he hasn't in the past stayed on great because he's been too fresh but you'd like to hope with Native River, with my boy, potentially with Bristol to May, that they're not going to be hanging around here. I don't think it's going to be a dawdling gallop here of the Betfair Chase. I think it'll be a proper test of stamina. I think Thistlecrack on good ground perhaps might be able to deal with that better than some of his opposition. And at 9-1, to one, he is favoured uh, just as a little, little bet. I think on the whole, it's a bit of a watching brief of a race, if I'm being honest. But I'm going to have a little stab on Tisselcrack at nines. The Betfair Exchange Stairs Handicap Earl is grade three over three miles. Also on good. Sees a few very interesting horses here. First assignment, who I saw last week at Cheltenham. It was almost the easiest Cheltenham handicap winner I've ever seen. Like He won absolute hands full, Tom O'Brien. But he's six to four again, so the price would indicate that he's fancied. Paisley Park was very good and very game in winning a good entry handicap hurdle off top weight, and he's four to one. But we've got an Irish Raider in this race, and at the moment, if everyone stands, it's an eight-runner race. So therefore, you get your three each-way places. And Falsam Blues in here at eight to one, and you know for a certainty that this horse will stay and he's usually not bad under both codes he was fourth in the irish national but 
to be honest, if you'd given him a clear run, I suspect he would have won the Irish National or at least come second. Wasn't so good over hurdles the time after that, but that was probably the end of just quite a hard season. And it's always difficult for horses coming back off kind of a massive race in one of those nationals. I think at eight to one, he's he's preferred to some of the others at the prices in terms of I think he's a good each way play at eight to one if you can keep with the eight runner card and therefore you get your three each way places. I think he'll run well. Moving over to the Ascot, the two of them. The Ascot Chase, Belitilog a very hot favourite. It looked, you know, up until the final declarations, you know, Min was in there, Bells Hill was in there, Lorena was in the Ascot Hurdle. If you honestly thought any of them were going to go over, uh, you need to really reassess. Like Willie, <laughs> I saw on Twitter, you know, some people calling him Willie Muggins at this stage. He just doesn't want to run them over in England, though. He, he'll flirt with it and he'll bring the odd horse over. And those horses that he does bring over, you do have to treat very carefully. But he doesn't really want to bring them over on the whole. And just, I don't think perhaps, to be fair, I don't think Min or Bell Sale really suited this race. Because it's probably too far for Min and too short for Bell Sale. And the Ascot Hurdle maybe is too far for the Rena. Like, I suspect they want to keep her to two miles, two mile four at best. Anyway, that's... That's my Willie Mullins kind of rant. Well, not rant, but just kind of going through what I think he's going through. This is Ascot Chase. Like, Politolog is a worthy favourite. And he's a worthy favourite because he's the only real grade one horse in here. But he's odds on, which would reflect that. And again, odds on for a horse like this, I don't think is particularly appetising. And I don't like tipping odds on horses as well. Unless you really feel their certainties. I don't think he is a certainty, and therefore I'm going to um, side with Benatar at nine to two. And my reasoning for this is Baron Alco last last week was a good winner of the Bet Victor Gold Cup at the Cheltenham November meeting, beating Frodon by two lengths. But they were ten lengths clear a third. But my the thing that makes me wonder is that Jamie Moore was initially jocked up on Benatar before he was a late non runner, and then switched to Baron Alco. So he obviously thought Benatar might have had a better chance than Baron Alco. They always go on, like he was at Plumpton on Monday and Jamie Moore was saying how they really like this horse. And the Moors don't usually give too much away, to be fair. They're usually a fairly uh, down-to-earth, kind of trying to keep everything under the radar sort. But they do like this Benatar horse. Hopefully the race will be run at a good gallop, which will help with his uh, settling issues. And at 9-2, to two, he's taken to uh, take on Politolog. Perhaps, like, if you're really, really scummy, you could, I suppose, go each way on 92. But I'll just have a bit of a win bet on him. And the Ascot Hurdle. And I do believe this is just a two-horse race, unlike the others, because I just don't see any of the others getting involved. Yeah, there's two or three horses that certainly won't. Perhaps Old Guard might give them a race. But it seems to be between If the Cap Fits and We Have a Dream, who both ran against each other at Wing Canton in the Elite Hurdle, of which If the Cap Fits came second and We Have a Dream came third. But I'm going to side with We Have a Dream at 11 to 8, like they're very similar prices, so they can't really split them. If the cap fits six to five, we have a dream eleven to eight. We have a dream at eleven to eight. I think he'll be suited more by this step up in trip than if the cap fits. I think if the cap fits is more of a two miler, if I'm being honest. And I think we have a dream is more of an all out galloper. And Nicky Anderson has his horses in good shape, as per the usual. And at 11 to 8, he is the fancy. So just going through them all very quickly. Betfair Chase taking a small stab on Tizzlecrack at 9 to 1 in the Betfair Exchange Handicap Hurdle. False and Blue at 8 to 1, especially each way if they if the race stays at 8 runners and therefore you get 3 places. And then a little, uh, little go on Benatar at 9 to 2 to take on Politolog. And we have a dream, probably, as he's the shortest price, you're going to have to go a little... Uh, further in to get your rewards at 11 to 8. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below, and of course, give me your suggestions. Who do you think is going to win the Betfair Chase? Who do you think win, is going to win the Ascot Chase and all those four races that I've covered? Hopefully, we'll be doing these pretty regularly in the next couple of weeks as some really tasty jumps racing is coming our way. Anyway, until next time, best of luck.